happening here? What's happening? All right, so today we are going to talk about lighting. We're going to talk about lenses and the whole thing. So let's talk about it a little bit. So you're going to go out, you're going to take some photographs, right? How do you know what lens to bring with you? What lens do you bring with you? That's why you need to come to the Sigma booth and buy every lens you can. This guy here just bought 12 of them today. So if you only had one lens you could take with you, what lens would you get? I'd probably take the 35. What would you take? The 85. The 85? Now, what if you come into a situation where you needed a wide angle? Uh, you don't want to be using zoom lenses. You want to be using prime. No, I'm serious. What's the difference between a prime and a zoom lens? They're pretty much today, they're pretty much, sharpness is pretty close. Yes, the primes are sharper. But what's the biggest significant dis difference is the bouquet of the background. The reason why you should have a prime lens is you're gonna make the bouquet in the background so beautiful that zoom lenses just can't do. But you should have all three zoom lenses. Actually, I'll sell you four of them if you can afford another one. How are you today? All right, so what do you wanna do? Should we take some pictures? I know a really good looking guy right here. Let's bring him up here. Come on up, Nick! Yeah, Nick! Look at this guy, isn't he the best? All right, so we got Nick here. We're gonna take a picture of him, right? So you think I should turn the light on? Do I have to turn the light on and take a picture? No, we don't have to turn the light on anymore. We got ISO 1 billion. So what if you notice now, a lot of photographers say, I'm a natural light photographer. Why would I turn on a light? The light's natural. Natural light is not the best, right? It can be if you know where to find it. You know what always gets me? People want to take a selfie with me, right? They don't even, no rhyme or reason, they don't even know where the light is. So I gotta tell them, wait, 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 wait. The light's gotta be right, let's go over here. So anyway, I brought my own light, so maybe I should turn it on. So we got the light, we're gonna take a picture of this nice looking guy. Now, what's the best color shirt this guy could ever wear? You look at their eyes. If you got blue I mean, eyes, I mean, you wear a blue shirt. I, I want to get you want his I, eyes to come out green, put him in a green shirt. You know, a lot of the situation that you photograph has to do with giving people the right outfit for them too, you know? So you gotta look at their eyes and explain to them, you know, your color eyes, you're an earth tone. You can wear reds. You look great with a red dress on. You look stunning. But you gotta already know what's gonna happen. All right, so I got my light. Are you a student? Possibly, yeah. You're a photographer? All right, so you know that light right there? How far away do we put it from? When you set up your light, do you know what's the first decision you do? It's the first decision you do with lighting. Figure out the distance. How far away is your light supposed to be from the subject? How far away do we put it? We want to take a picture of him. How far away would you put the light? What's the biggest decision in lighting? The distance. Okay, so what does the distance do? What happens when you move the light at different distances? Okay, can you do me a favor? Write down the closer the light is, the softer it is, and then erase it, cross it out. Yes, because you're just learning from a photographer who doesn't know anything about lighting. Your teacher doesn't know. If your teacher at the school knew anything, they'd be out making money like me. Just joking. No, it, it can work, but that's not the principle. What does the distance of light do? The first thing you need to learn if you're in a class on lighting is learn what the distance do. Can I explain what it does? Okay, the distance controls your coverage. Distance is only for coverage. Oh, it has nothing to do with softness. Softness is controlled by what size box you pick, not by changing the distance. The bigger the softer. But what does the distance do? Yeah, okay, so what happens if I bring the light, do you know what coverage means? What? If I bring the light in really close, when you bring the light in really close, what happens to the background? Can you bring the light there and let me take a picture with him? What's wrong with the lighting right now? He's brighter than I am. How do you make us both the same brightness? What would you do with the light? He's brighter than me. How would you even it out? The distance of the light is the biggest decision in lighting. It's everything. Photographers don't know why they're putting the light back and forth. You know what most of them do it for? The brightness. Oh, brighten it up. Bring it closer. Darken it up. Back it up. The biggest thing happens is, let's say he's on, we're on location with him, and it's a beautiful room, and you got to take a picture of him. 
What would happen if you brought the light really close to him? The room would go completely black. What happens if you back it up? The whole room's lit. So the distance of the light you're covering. Okay, did you ever take a photograph and the light's not even on the group? Like right now, he's brighter than me. How do you even that up? Move us away from the light. You ever go to a house and there's a window? Do you put somebody right next to the window? You do? You can. Do you put them in the middle of the window or do you put them behind the window? Don't put them in the window. Put them behind it. Now the light can sweep by. So it's never in the window. It's just one step behind it right there. Now, you can't add anybody to this because the light's dying. So then you move them away from the window so that the lights had a chance to spread. Okay, I'm going to photograph all these people. I'm this close to you. Are they getting any light? Have you taken any classes in this whole place where somebody's explaining light? You know what they teach you? Here's a trigger. Watch. I'm going to make that flash flash. That's how they teach you. Has anybody ever told you where it goes, how far away it goes, how high it goes, how to make it soft, how to make it harsh, how to light the whole room, how to not light the room? This is stuff you're going to go through every single day on assignment. Okay. We got to photograph him. Me and you are the photographers. He's in this beautiful room. How many have you ever seen? So me and you are going to talk. How far away do we put the light? How far away would you put it? Why? Thank you. I'm trying to help you, okay? Now, we get there and we go, oh my God. Who said this place looks nice? It's terrible. Him and you are going, whoa, I don't like that background. What do we do? Okay, I love you. Thank you. All right. So let's take it to the next step. Did you guys all got that, right? The distance is not to make lighting soft and harsh. The only thing you're ever going to be taught on lighting is bring it in close, bring it in close, bring it in close. I just asked her, what's the only thing you ever learn on lighting? Bring it in close, back it up, bring it in close. She thinks it's to control softness. It's not. It's to control the light depth of field in the room. All right, now, what if we want the light to be soft? What do we do? Get this really big. If we don't want it, we're going to make it small. Okay, let's get that out of there. Now we got to go to the next level. Now it's where is your light at? Not how far away. What position is it? Thanks, Brent. What's wrong with the lighting right now? What's wrong with the lighting? Number one mistake in light. It can be harsh. It can be harsh if you expose for it correctly. But we know what I want you to learn. Your teacher doesn't know this. You think you're gonna learn this at college? One week with me and you learn marks. Pay me the 50 grand you just paid. Watch this. That's all you need to learn. A whole year in college. Is that shadow right there. See that edge, that point? Where is that supposed to go? See, lighting is all about the shadow, not the highlight. You think this is harsh light? Stop it down, expose for the highlight. It's fine. You've just never seen harsh lighting, because you know why? Everybody cops out in life and uses a great big huge softbox that a five-year-old can do. Give yourself a light bulb, one light bulb, and see if you know what you can do without a softbox. Take that teacher in your class and you go to tell them, take that softbox off. Let me see what you can do. Show me what you got. It's nothing. It's got nothing. Watch this. This shadow cannot go sideways. That's saying that your main light's at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, right? Where's the catch light supposed to be? 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. I'm going to raise this light until that shadow goes right to the edge of the lip. That's the finish line. Where's the finish line? Okay, watch. Tell me when to stop. And they do that to your feet. You are flat lighting it. And that means you're going to flatten it. How's that? Okay, now when you go to school, they tell you 45 degree angle. See how high it is? You ever seen a light? Any? Go around this place today. Come back. Tell me if you saw anybody with the light at the proper height. Just go around the whole show, go to every booth, any photographer, tell me if the light's up this high. Anywhere. This is what they do. It's down here. It's too low. See these lines on your face? The light stays in there and it aims towards the edge of the lift. The only time the light is down low is split light. That's split light. Split light is not split light if he has a black eye in here. Did they teach you split, broad, short, butterfly, Rembrandt? 
Okay, the positions of the light. Split, broad, short, Rembrandt, broad, Rembrandt, butterfly, modified butterfly. That's the seven notes to light it. Okay, if the light's back too far, he's going to get a black eye in there. When you do split light, you bring it forward till that's as clean as you can get. If the light goes to the other side, that's, that's not. This right now is not Rembrandt. It's not split. It's nothing. See the shadow in his eye over there? That shadow can't be in the light of his eye. Nobody knows Rembrandt. I swear, it's the blind leading the blind. All these classes I've been to, it's the blind leading the blind. They don't even know. You cannot do Rembrandt lighting with the shadow in the eyeball. Watch this. See the shadow in the white there? That can't be in there. So watch me move it just this much. See me get it out of there? Okay, now I'm just going to take that light and move it that much. See the mistake? That's the accuracy of lighting, which is good. It's not supposed to be that simple. Everybody's not supposed to be able to do this. You can't photograph people. Go photograph a bug, a flower. Joking. Do you know there's different positions of the light for different faces? you got a big, wide face. What kind of light do you put on it? What if it's a narrow face? What kind of light do you put on it? What if they got a bald head, big ears, double chin? This is photography of people. If you're going to photograph a person, it's not just click, 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 click. So what angle did you choose? Who's the best photographer? Who's the best photographer? I've been with photographers where they took a picture of a movie star and they're egoed out on themselves. They think they're the best. But what am I looking for? Did you make the person that you photograph look the best? Because I can tell, I'd see that person in person and go, wow, you made them look good. That's what you want. Okay. Does anybody use speed lights? I do. Okay, so if I got this light here, and I just moved it that much and it's in his eye, how would you possibly come up here with your speed light and put it in the right spot without that in his eye? You're not. It's impossible. I'm the only one that can do it. I'm going to show you how. joking. Come on. Here's what they do, though, with their speed light. They put it out here and they just do flat light. If every class I've ever seen on speed lighting is, look, this is a trigger. Watch me trigger this flash. They didn't tell you where it's supposed to go. They didn't tell you what's the correct distance. They didn't tell you what's the correct height. Everyone I've seen, they got the light down too low. Everyone, that's flat lighting. It's absolutely a zero. Let's look at butterfly light. If there's no shadow under the nose, like this, that's not butterfly light. If the light's up too high, he's got black eyes, the shadow's going into the lips, that's not butterfly light. So there's a critical area of where that light goes. So let's go back over here. I'm going to show you how to do this if you have a speed light. So I'm going to get this out of whack. You think I can put this into place without a modeling light? Because when you have a speed light, you don't have a modeling light. How are you going to know where to go? So what I do is I align myself with my light stand. And I've done this for so many years. I can tell you right where that light's supposed to go without anything in the white. Now look, if I just move it that much, it's in his eye. You're talking about putting it exactly on the spot. Does anybody want to come up here and see what I see? You're paying attention. Come on, I want to help you. I'm here to help. You think I want to talk? Look at this. Nick, just keep looking straight. Come on, too. Anybody that wants to see how much of this eye... How much of this eye are you seeing? I want you to put that light stand in the right spot every single time. How much do this, this you'll always see? Once you memorize that, I swear for the rest of your life, you're always going to put the light in the right spot. You know what I mean? Just look where that stand is. Study it. You should be able to put that light out. Anybody here bring a light meter with them? Don't ever bring a light meter with you again. Do me a favor. Test the light before you get there. Let me ask you this. Keep, you guys keep looking. This light at this far away is what, what, what brightness? Okay, let's just say it's 5'6 at 125. Wouldn't it be 5'6 at 125 for the rest of your life at that far away? So why is it your camera set before you get there? 
Who brings a meter with them? Seriously, who's got a meter? Don't you ever bring a meter with you again. Meter that light before you go. You took a meter with you? You don't know what it, I got buddies, they set, they, they duct tape the focus on their camera before they get there. Come on, I'm joking with you on that one. All right, so what? I'm gonna, before I go outside for the rest of my life, I'm never gonna do this again. I'm gonna do this one time in my studio before I go. One, two, three, four, five. Five feet with the meter, it says five, six at 125. I'm done. Oh, what if I gotta back it up? Why do I meter what it is at 10 feet? You got me, if it's your flash, don't you use it every day? Take that thing off of TTL. Does anybody here use TTL? I'm gonna shoot that stupid TTL thing right off the block. Don't ever use TTL again. You know why? It's never gonna be consistent. You should know this stuff. Just put the light at 10 feet away. It's F8 at 300 or whatever. Know your stuff before you get there. Seriously, you think I get to the job and go, oh, wait a minute, I gotta set my camera. Ever? That'd be like me right now turning my back to you and go, well, let me see, let me think what I gotta say to you. You never turn your back on your client. You never stop what you're doing. Stuff should be secondary. You should be a pro. An amateur don't know nothing. Hang on, let me take another one. Oh, go stand over there. No, there's light there. Don't do that. Oh, go over here. You don't even know where they're going and all this stuff. You got to have narrowed down ahead of time so you know what you're doing, right? Okay, sit back down. I like you here. Pay attention. Okay, so use the media at your studio and figure it out ahead. Okay, so we figured that out, right? So now we're learning some of the positions of the light. Why would you do a split light of Broad light, a Rembrandt, a butterfly, any position of the light. Why would you move it around? Different faces need different light. Your job is the fast photographers don't just turn a light on. They know, just like a doctor. You don't think it's best. You, don't, you ever been to the hospital? Do you know the intern kid? He just started practicing. He's practicing. He don't know nothing. I go to the hospital, I go, I don't want this kid. Send that kid in the doctor's lounge to talk to the old guy, like me, old guy's been doing it for 35 years. Let him figure out, okay, let's just say my elbow hurt right now. You think this young kid knows what's going on? He's clueless. The older guy can tell you in two seconds, I've done that a billion times, the guy's got arthritis or whatever it is. They'll tell you. Okay, his face, how would you light him? You should be thinking about this. What angle would you photograph him at? Everybody's got a good angle and a bad side. All right, let's switch you for a minute, Nick. Let me bring my girlfriend up here. Come on up here for a minute. Take your glasses off just for a minute. That way I look better. Do I look good now? Okay, so I'm going to mess with your hair. You just keep looking that way. So let's just say she's got bangs here. And I light her from this side. I'm casting shadows all across her forehead. I'm watching these photographers and they're turning their light on for no rhyme or reason. No rhyme or reason. What side of her does the light go on? Over here, we're casting shadows across her forehead. Either take her hair and pull it back. If it's going to stay there, the light's got to go to the other side. If that's where the part of her hair is, you're putting shadows all across her forehead. Right? So let's put it over here. What do you want? Your picture taken? You're cool, dude. I like you. Okay, so now look that way. You got to mess with people. Can I give you a little story? My, my, two more minutes? I got a lot more to say. So my kid was born at the hospital, right? The doctor walks in, he goes, hey, I was at this party. He goes, cut the cord. Never even looked at the kid being born. A professional photographer shouldn't even look. They should already, let me tell you how to fix your hair. Go behind the back of your head, find the center of your hair, bring it forward. Center of your hair, split it, bring it forward. Her hair is going to be perfect. Then you know what you do? You just go in here and go like this. Bend it outward, inward and outward. If we're so close like this, then guess what? Perfect. We but girls do this. See how Photographers don't even look at hair. I see all these senior portraits, all this stuff. They've never fixed a shirt, a hair, a detail in their entire life. you got to pay attention to the details, fix all that stuff. So that's it for me. i got to take a break. I've talked too much. I do have some videos. i got a couple videos left. I'm going to blow them out if anybody wants one. $40 each, normally 100 all right, I got one question. I'll give you a gift. One question. Have you guys ever seen one of these things? So no, Sarah, let me have a bit of this 
What does it do? White balance. What else? What else does it do? Light meter? You're going to win it. Watch this. You take this. If, she, if the model was still here, it's not an ND filter. It, it white balances your camera, but most important, you can put your camera on automatic, put it where the subject is, take a picture, and it tells you your exposure. So it's really a light meter. It's worth more. I touched it. Now it's worse. Stay here in the Sigma booth. Can I say one thing to you all before I leave? I don't trust nobody. I Google. I have a Canon Mark III. What's the best lens for my camera I can buy? Guess what popped up? Sigma 35. You Google it yourself. DxO Labs, the lab that tests, tests everything. Guess how much the best lens is over here? The 35 millimeter art. It's like $800, and it's even on sale. And we've been getting ripped off or what? The second one was 50, the third one was Zeiss, and the fourth one was Brand X. Not at the top. Not at the top. This guy over here, how many lenses do you think he just bought today? 12. Or he could have bought three at X. And they ain't no better. And they tried to buy this company. I'm not here for no reason. Thank you all. Stick around. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have it one more time for James Schmelzer. Folks, anybody that just tells you to Google it uh, has confidence in what he's talking about. This is the last frontier.